scope creep is one of those things where when it happens, people generally respond in one of two ways. Either they're kind of like, yeah, I know I'm creeping on my scope, but it's necessary for the added value. Or they're kind of like, yeah, I know I'm doing some scope creep, but nah, what can you do about it? And look, creep on that scope if you want, but there are some major dangers involved with overbuilding your app. And so in this video, we're going to talk about exactly what those dangers are and what you should be doing instead. This is going to help you avoid wasting a ton of time and probably a lot of money too, and instead just get your app out there. So there are five major dangers in overbuilding your app, and that first one is related to the time and money waste that we talked about. So the very first step of testing with your app is to validate the product and get feedback so that you can make informed decisions about the next steps that you take with your app. So when you overbuild your app prior to launching it, you are making lots of assumptions about what you should be building that technically go beyond the true first version. Now, a lot of people argue that they're not assumptions because they simply know that these features are necessary to add the value, maybe even because they've talked to their market. But that doesn't really matter because until you put the first version product in their hands and have them use it, you're not going to get the validation you need. So don't waste time and waste money overbuilding your product when you can instead just put the, the true first version out there, get the actual validation, and make better decisions moving forward. And to add to that, the second major danger in overbuilding is simply delaying the launch of your product and probably of your business as a whole, but without any added benefit to you. You know, you may be thinking that you're building more and more features because ultimately that's going to create a more valuable app, but all you're doing is delaying the potential of bringing back in a return on your time and your money investment into all the development. Why delay it when you can instead put it out earlier, start getting traction, getting feedback, and actually monetizing your product? You're not helping yourself by trying to delay that for something bigger. The third danger in overbuilding your app is that when you do that, you're actually losing value with your product. There's a lot more value in a focused solution, a solution being an app, than a cluttered one. When a person is coming onto your app, they are looking for a, a solution to get them from point A to point B. In other words, they're in a problem state and they want to get a solution that's going to take them to the outcome state where they're no longer experiencing the problem and the pain points that come along with that. Now, when you have a cluttered solution, the thing that takes them from problem to outcome, it's just going to delay the time in getting them to the outcome. Ultimately, that's frustrating and there's no reason to add more because more isn't always better. So instead, create a very focused app so that you can create a very high value app. And to add on to that, the fourth danger is that when you overbuild your app, you're really muddying the messaging around your app. So when you start to do your user outreach and your marketing, generally when you have an overbuilt app and a cluttered solution like we talked about, it's really hard to create concise, impactful messaging that resonates with your audience and gets them to actually want to convert to being users of your app. Usually with overbuilt apps, the messaging or the marketing becomes about the features themselves. That's not the most effective way to market your app or really any product or business. You want to market the benefits. Speak to the benefits, that outcome state that we talked about, not the actual features alone because that's not what resonates with the user because again, that user is in that problem state or zone. They just want to achieve that ideal outcome. And when you have an overbuilt and a cluttered app, it really muddies that messaging. It's hard to speak directly to the problem and directly to the outcome when there's so much clutter. And the fifth and possibly biggest danger of overbuilding your app is that ultimately you are just fooling yourself. 
more often than not, and I say this in as supportive of a way as I can, but continuing to build feels a lot safer than launching your app. That's just the reality. And if you continue to fool yourself by saying, well, this feature is gonna add more value, or I just, now I know I have to have this in place, even though a week ago I wasn't even thinking about it, right? If you continue to let yourself stay in that mindset, you are going to be building your app forever and you're never going to launch because building, building, building feels safer than launching and putting yourself out there. Again, that's just the reality. So get yourself out of that mindset, stop fooling yourself and don't overbuild. Now, before getting to what you should be doing instead of overbuilding, there's one mindset shift I want you to understand to help you move forward correctly, continuously from here. Okay, so picture this. You need a new pair of jeans. You gotta replace your favorite pair. So you go to the mall and you, you walk over to the jeans store right? So imagine walking inside and immediately you are just overwhelmed with options. I mean, there are thousands of pairs of jeans lining the walls and the shelves and hanging from racks and you're, you're walking under jeans and next to jeans and uh, jeans everywhere, okay? They have every color, every size, every style. There are add-ons to jeans, customizations for different types of pockets or I, I don't even know what, but there's just thousands of jeans everywhere. Now, at first, when you start walking through, it's kind of fun, right? You're looking around and you're thinking, wow, there's just so much here. But after maybe a minute, two minutes of walking through and realizing how monumental of a task you have ahead of you, things aren't so fun anymore. You start looking at your watch and you start walking a little bit more quickly and, you know, pulling more things off the racks and the pile in your arms is growing, you know, bigger and bigger every second. And you start to think, oh my gosh, I'm never going to find a pair of jeans because I got to go. I can't spend two hours looking at all these options. So in that situation, maybe you continue on and you find a pair of jeans or maybe you just decide to walk out because you just don't have the time. But ask yourself, would you go and, and shop at that store every time you needed to replace a new pair of jeans? I mean, I wouldn't because it, it would just be annoying, really. So I want you to think about your app in the exact same way. Your app is the solution that takes a person from having a problem to no longer having a problem. And you wanna get that person from that problem to not having the problem as easily, conveniently, and quickly as possible. Because that is what's gonna keep the user coming back again and again and again, because your app is a solution. So remember, more does not always equal better. That is the most important thing that you can carry forward. Okay, so with that in mind, now let's dig into three specific things you should be doing instead of overbuilding your app. Number one, first things first, follow the Moscow matrix to correctly scope your app. Moscow is an acronym that stands for must have, should have, could have, and won't have for now. Must have features are ones that should be in place in order for a user to solve a core problem should have features, should be in place in order for a user to solve a core problem again and again in real life applications, could have features, could make the user's experience better and won't have features, won't be applicable or helpful until there is a certain volume of users on board, for example. Now, there is a free extended training and actually a template you can use to scope your app correctly over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash perfect hyphen pilot. There will be a link in this in the description. So we won't go through a whole scoping process in this video, but if you want to do that and you need help just making your scoping a lot easier, then grab that training and template. But the key here is to understand that you need to scope your app into different development and testing versions. And the testing is really important here because you should be getting feedback at very specific points in your app's development. So after you build those must have features, the first version of your app, you need to get that product validation. Is your assumption, your hypothesis, no matter how educated it is, 
Is it actually correct? Because look, even if I'm building an app for myself, for a process that I go through every single day, I am still going to scope a first version of that app and validate that feature set first because it's still an assumption, right? That, that feature set scope is still an assumption, even though it's my process that I do every single day. It still has to be validated because Right now, it's just an idea and it needs to be put to practice because, and I'm speaking from personal experience because I've done this a number of times, when you put an app into practice, you're going to use it a little bit differently than you've imagined. And so that first version scope is very important because the feedback you get from it is even more important. So it's kind of a high level summary. You wanna make sure that your core app works then you want to make it work better. Then you want to add more value. And these are different versions where you're testing at each point. So version one app, MVP, does the product actually work? Version two, moving forward through some of those should haves, some of those could haves, does the product work a little bit better? Can we tweak, streamline some of these features? And then moving forward, how do we add more value? That's the process you wanna follow. The feedback along the way is so important and if you overbuild your app, you cannot get it. The second thing to do instead of overbuilding your app is to drill it into your brain that just because you can do something does not mean you should do something. Look, when you're building your app yourself using no-code tools, you're, you're going to be learning a lot along the way. Yes, you're gonna be building your app, but you're gonna be developing a skill set. And as you do that, you're gonna be realizing that so many things are possible. You have so much power at your fingertips, but just because you can build something does not mean you should. So when you go and use other apps and you see features in those and you think, well, I know how to build that, I should put that into my app. No, <laughs> just because you can does not mean you should. Anything you build in your app should be done with intent. It should be purposeful. It should directly take a person from the problem to the outcome. So again, just because you can build it does not mean you should. And the third thing that you should do instead of overbuilding is to actually learn to differentiate between having shiny object syndrome and actually building the necessities. Now this might sound a little bit redundant from the last one, but it is different because it's important to be able to decipher when am I just kind of infatuated with an idea or just excited about something new versus when do I actually need to put this into the app because of the value it brings? Now, the a very practical way to differentiate these things is to have an already scoped complete app. Okay, so using the Moscow matrix, going back to that, going back to the template that you can download and use, Scoping out these versions makes it so that when that shiny object syndrome kind of comes up, you know, when you get an idea of, you know, like, wouldn't it be cool to add this to my app? Well, you can go back to your scope and you can actually look through and see, is this related to my first major milestone? That first major milestone being core product validation. And the only thing that that core product is related to is solving the initial problem. Not solving it in all the best ways, in all the most convenient ways, in the fastest ways even, but just solving it, right? So if you, if you have your scope laid out, then you can differentiate very practically without any bias as to whether or not something is just cool in the moment or whether something is actually valuable in solving that core problem for the version of your app you're currently building. Okay, now look, if at this point you're thinking, maybe I have kind of fallen victim to some scope creep, or maybe I likely will when I start my development, then I want you to head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop, where you'll get access to an extended free training. And we're gonna go through every single step you need to take when scoping your app, when making sure that you are understanding even which no-code tools to use and how to use them and, and what's even possible with all of this, right? So if you wanna move forward confidently and correctly and you don't wanna run into all of these types of traps, 
then head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop to join in on that. It's completely free. And hey, I hope this was helpful. We'll see you in the next one. Thank <music> you.